today we're going to be looking at the SAT substitution method. So here's a question from test one section eight on page 422 of the College Board SAT Blue Book. And this is question number 10. It says if k equals x divided by three and x does not equal zero, what is three x equal in terms of k? Well, first we have to note that we have a restriction here. And the restriction is that x cannot equal zero. So we're gonna go ahead and start by choosing a value for x that does not equal zero. And looking at this side here, I could see that I'm dividing x by three. So I wanna choose a number that's divisible by three. So I'm gonna choose in this case, why don't we say x is six. Well, if x is six, then what's the value of k? Well, I know that k is x divided by three. So k in this case is six divided by three. So k equals two. So we know that k is two. Okay, so we have our x value here, which is six. We have our k value is two. Now we're gonna go ahead and answer the question. What does three x equal in terms of k? Whenever you see something like in terms of k, you can cross it out. We don't need to look at that right now. The only thing we really care about here is answering the main question, which is what does three x equal? So in this case, when we know that x is six, let's go ahead and answer our question here. Well, if x is six, then in this case, 3x would equal three times six, which is 18. Now all we need to do is find, figure out which one of our answer choices equals 18. So we go through, we check answer A, K is two, that's not 18. B equals nine times two, which is 18. So here's our answer, B. Similarly, this strategy can be used for other questions as well. So here's one from test six, uh, section two, question three on page 700. And the question says, if x plus three equals a, then two x plus six equals what? So again, here we're gonna start by choosing our value for x. And I always like to make it simple. And I always say, never choose zero, one or negative one. Those have some special properties that can throw off your answer. So in this case, again, I'm gonna go ahead and choose x is two. We're gonna keep it simple. So if x is two, then two plus three equals a. Well, two plus three is five. So in this case, I know that a has to equal five. Now we're looking for what the value of two x plus six is. Well, two times x plus six would equal two times x in this case is two. Two plus six. So we get two times two is four plus six, and that equals 10. So our answer here, what does two X plus six equal? It equals 10. Now we have to match our answer with 10. So let's go ahead and substitute the value we found into our answer choices. So A is five. So five plus three, is that 10? No. Five plus six, is that 10? No. Two times five, that does equal 10. There's our answer right there. C is the correct answer. Okay, let's take a look at question 18 here. Uh, this is from test five, it's section two, it's on page 642. And the question states if the average or arithmetic mean of X and Y is K, which of the following is the average of X, Y, and Z? Hmm, all right, good question here. So let's start at the first here, it says the average of x and y is k. So let's get an x value and let's get a y value. And I'm gonna choose for this x is two and y is four. Okay, so x, I have my y, and it says the average of these two numbers is k. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the average of those two numbers and figure out what k is. Well, to get the average, you add up your numbers and divide by the total amount. So two plus four and then divide by two because there's two of them. That's gonna equal K. Well, two plus four gives me six divided by two is K. So in this case, K equals three. So here we have our value of K. Now we're gonna answer the question, which of the following is the average of X, Y, and Z? Oh, well, we don't have a Z yet. So I'm gonna throw in a Z here. So let's put a Z, we can choose our value for Z because there's no restrictions. So I'm gonna say Z is six. So now we want the average of X, Y, and Z. Well, X, Y, and Z 
would mean we're taking x plus y plus z and dividing it by 3. Okay, so in this case we're taking 2 plus 4 plus 6 and dividing that by 3. So on the top here we're going to get 12 divided by 3, which gives me 4. So the average here of x, y, and z is 4. And now I'm going to go through my answer choices and see which one of those equals 4. Okay, so let's start at the top here. So remember, we're using all these have k and z in them. So we're going to use the k and the z that we have here, which is 3 and 6. So now we're going to go through it. Okay, well here we have 2 times 3 plus 6 divided by 3. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 plus 6 is 12. 12 divided by 3 is 4. There's our answer right off the bat. So the correct answer here is A. Finally, uh, we can use the same strategy for percent questions as well. So this question comes from test one, section three. Uh, it's question 20 on page 401. And the question states, a salesperson's commission is K percent of the selling price of a car. Which of the following represents the commission in dollars on two cars that sold for $14,000 each? Okay, so usually easy percents to work with are 50% and 10%. So in this case, um, I'm going to use 50% to make this easy. So I'm going to say a salesperson's commission is K percent of the selling price of the car. So I'm going to say that K equals 50. So a salesperson's commission is 50% of the selling price of a car. So which of the following represents the commission in dollars on two cars that sold for 14000 each? Well, if they sold for 14000 each, I had this car that sold for 14000 and I had this car that sold for 14000 And I know that my commission, based on what I chose here, is 50% of the selling price of the car. So on this car, I made 50%, which is half. So I made $7,000. And on this car, I made 50%, which would be $7,000. So total, my total commission for the two cars... So my commission equals 7,000 plus 7,000. So my commission was a total of $14,000 when K equaled 50. So now I have to match my answer here, or my choice that I uh, substitute in for K, into my answers here. So let's go ahead and test out A. So we have 280K. So 280 times 50 equals 14,000. Wow, again, right off the bat, answer A is the correct answer. This shows my commission on two cars that sold for 14,000 each. To learn these strategies and many more, feel free to give us a call at the number listed in front of you right now or visit our website, www.beyondthetestprep.com.